last lecture we are computing the integral 0 to infinity sin x by x dx and uh, towards that we have defined that f of x is equal to 1 over sin uh, just. So, th this as we know this is this goes to 0. Therefore, what we get is that sin n plus 1 half of x by uh, sin x by 2 this is equal to 1 by sin x by 2 minus 2 by x sin n plus 1 half of x plus sin n plus 1 half of x into 2 by x right and uh, we would like to compute this. So, if we look at the integral 0 to pi then this is sin n plus half x by x this is equal to uh, on this side this is uh, if I take this 0 to pi uh, 1 by 2 factor you can take that this is sin n plus half x by sin x by 2 and plus 1 by 2 into 0 to pi f of x and then this is sin n plus 1 half of 2 x dx. As you can see that this value what we know that what is the value of this and uh, and this is going to give me, uh, so this is, this value is nothing but here. So, now 0 to pi, this is equal to pi by 2, because the entire from minus pi to pi, it is 2 pi, so 0 to pi. And now, f is a Riemann integrable function, it is bounded at 0, because that is what the, we are killing the cancellation. So, therefore, this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity by Riemann Lebesgue lemma. Thus, plus this, thus lim 0 to infinity sin x by x dx this is equal to pi by 2 hence that is what we have proved. Okay. Now, we will see another application of uh, uh, this Percival identity this is namely uh, suppose now if we had given with if f 2 pi periodic and difference of piece and in C 1. Even I do not need C 1, I can do with the f uh, is uh, C 1 piece wise not entirely that is also ok for me. Uh, nevertheless, now that means this is saying that f prime exists and this is also remain integrable belongs to or 0 to 2 pi. So, now what can I say about the relationship between f and f, f prime? So, what it says is a very important uh, inequality uh, in analysis which is called the Wirtinger inequality. So, let 
f is in c 1 0 to 2 pi and uh, integral of 0 to 2 pi f theta d theta this is equal to 0 then 0 to 2 pi mod of f of t square d t this is lesser equal to 0 to 2 pi mod of f prime t square d t. And equality holds if and only if f is equal to a sin t plus some b cos t. So, easily one can see that if f is equal to a sin t plus b cos t, then the equality occurs. But now, how to prove this inequality? So, now I, I start with 0 to 2 pi mod of f of t square d t. So, by Perceval identity, I know that this is equal to n from minus infinity to infinity mod of f hat of n square, which I can write this as f hat at 0 plus summation mod n greater or equal to 1 mod of f hat of n square. Okay. So, now f hat of 0 is 0. So, this is nothing but mod n greater or equal to 1 mod of f hat of n square which is lesser equal to as mod n is always greater or equal to 1. Therefore, this sum is going to be lesser equal to mod n greater or equal to 1 n times f hat of n square. Now, n times f hat of n is what? So, this is nothing but summation over mod n greater or equal to 1 mod of f prime hat at n square, because f prime hat at n is i n f hat of n. So, this is uh, lesser equal to summation over n equal to uh, minus infinity to infinity mod of f prime hat at n. I am just I do not have any information about f hat at 0, but this is a non negative quantity. I can add that. Hence, this is going to be equal to uh, this is a factor of 1 by 2 pi, rather, I would put it over here. So, this is 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi mod of f prime of t square d t and that is what is the Wittinger inequality is and now, now let us try to see that if uh, f is uh, a sin t plus b cos t then f prime is going to be nothing but uh, minus of b sin t plus a cos, cos t and you can see that both th they are same. Now, if f is in this form, then the equality occurs. Now, if equality occurs here, then we need to show that f is of this form. Okay, so, now let us look at closely the proof. In the proof, what we have done, this is the only place where the inequality is occurring. Now, if this is equal to this, then 
all my calculation everywhere in between steps will turn into equality. Therefore, here in this step, this inequality will be replaced by equality. If both sides are equal, then this is going to be equality. This suggests that what does it mean? So, this says that mod n greater or equal to 1 mod of f hat if equality occurs. then square is equal to summation over mod n greater or equal to 1 mod of n times f hat of n square, because this is going to force this inequality to be equality if equality is occurring there. So, now as you can see that this term for mod n greater than 1, this is strictly mod of f hat of n square is strictly less than mod n f hat of n square. Therefore, this can happen, can happen only when mod n is equal to 1. This, this shows that actually f hat of n, this is equal to 0 for all mod n greater than 1 or rather you can say this is same thing as greater or equal to 2. Therefore, the Fourier series of f is not nothing but f hat of minus of 1 e to the power minus of i x plus f hat at 0 plus f hat at 1 e to the power minus i x. So, this we know that it is given that f hat of 0 is equal to 0, because integral 0 to 2 pi f theta d theta is equal to 0. So, this is nothing but f hat of minus of 1 e to the power minus of i x plus f hat of 1 e to the power minus of i x. Just using the Euler identity, we will get that this is equal to f hat of minus of 1, this is cos x plus i sin x plus f hat of 1 cos x minus of i sin x. So, if you take your a to be f hat of uh, i times f hat of minus of 1 uh, minus i times f hat of 1, then that is your a. So, you can find a and b such that f is going to look like a equal to a sin x plus b cos x. Okay. So, now, Another uh, important identity for uh, uh, Fourier series, the Percival identity is that if f and g belongs to Riemann integrable function of minus pi to pi or 0 to 2 pi, then inner product of f and g this is going to be equal to summation over n varies over z f hat of n g hat n bar. This is going to be 
another form of the Percival identity. In order to prove this, so what we will do is that we need a following identity which is true for any inner product space. So, this is uh, we can write that for norm of f plus g square here I am taking norm of f by definition is f inner product of f minus so all these are plus i times f plus i g square minus f minus of i g square. This is equal to 4 f in a product of g. This is simple calculation. You start with norm of f plus g square. This is equal to f plus g, f plus g, and uh, then you use the linearity of uh, this. Will imply this is norm of f square, or rather, just one more step. I will write f f plus f g plus g f plus g g. This is equal to norm of f square plus f g plus g f plus norm of g square. Similarly, you expand this f minus g norm square, which is f minus g inner product of f minus g, and and all this norm f plus i g is f plus i g inner product f plus i g, and you do the simple calculation by this, and everything will get cancelled as you can see from there if I am taking the subtracting this then this f square and g square term will vanish. Now, if you go on like this you are going to get that uh, this uh, you see here here f minus g f minus. So, let me just write one thing for you plus norm of g square this will come. Now, this is minus of f comma g minus of g comma f. And if you compute it, then automatically what you will get everything will get cancelled. So, you will arrive at this identity. Uh, no, you will arrive at this identity. So, once you have that, so therefore, you can write it f g this is equal to 1 by 4 norm of f plus g square minus f minus of g square plus i times norm of f plus i g minus f minus of i g. So, once you have that, now you apply the Percival identity that is with us, because we know the what is the value of norm of f square that is summation over mod of f hat of n square. And if you just by putting the Percival identity, we get with the simple complex algebraic calculation, you can get that this is nothing but n varies over z f 
hat of n g hat of n bar okay so uh, sometimes this formula is uh, uh, very useful and uh, let's see one application of this formula in the wittinger inequality so now wittinger inequality says that if f is c1 and integral of f vanishes then l2 norm of f is dominated by the l2 norm of f prime uh, so one can get that if f c 1 and 0 to 2 pi f theta d theta this is equal to 0 then Wittinger inequality gives that. Now, what happens if I have and I take any g belongs to c 1. If any g belongs to C1, then zero to two pi f of theta g of theta bar d theta square. This is lesser equal to integral zero to two pi mod of f of theta square d theta into 0 to 2 pi mod of g prime of theta square d theta. As you can see, I mean, uh, so it is uh, if our g satisfy the condition integral over g is equal to 0 integral over 0 to 2 pi g theta d theta is equal to 0, then this is nothing but just an application of the cauchy swarz inequality. But here remember that we are not given with integral from 0 to 2 pi g theta d theta is equal to 0. So, this suggests that we need to look for a different approach to do this. So, what we can get is uh, f inner product g, this side is nothing but f inner product g. So, now by our polarization identity, what we have proved uh, that this is equal to pi summation over n varies over z f hat of n g hat of n bar. Now, therefore, because if I am putting the inner product, uh, so this, uh, this is a bit of, uh, I have 2 pi times this. So, square which is uh, now lesser equal to, to summation over n varies over z, I can put the modulus inside the sum mod of g hat of n. So, here what I can, what we can do is, uh, this is square. Therefore, by applying the cauchy swarz inequality in this sum, what we get one by two is factor is gone, n varies over z mod of g hat of n square. So, now this is lesser equal to this is 0 to 2 pi mod of f of theta square d theta and now this one uh, as you can see that here 
there is a catch over here. So, now if this I can write it as this sum because f hat of 0 is 0 then this is n not equal to 0 n varies over z. So, here we can replace this actually by n not equal to 0 and then this is n not equal to 0. Now, this one is dominated by n g hat of n square n not equal to 0 and which is now this is nothing but with certain into 0 to 2 pi this 1 by 4 pi factor is there. So, 1 by 2 pi here this is uh, 1 by 2 pi by 1 by 2 pi mod of g prime of theta square d theta that is what. So, it is a clever way of uh, getting uh, uh, because we do not have any estimate over g prime. So, what we need to know that I know that this g prime theta is nothing but uh, by Percival identity its L2 norm is n g hat of n square. So, I we work from the Fourier transform side by using the fact that uh, uh, f hat of 0 is equal to 0 because we do not have any information about g hat of 0. So, the, that is the reason why we are if g hat of 0 is 0 then this problem is trivial. Uh, to accommodate that what we are doing is that we are taking the f hat of 0 is equal to 0 and killing the n equal to 0 part then we are dominating the rest of the for rest of the n g hat of n modulus of g hat of n by n times g hat of n mod and then we are again uh, dominating that by the little l 2 uh, I mean summation over n from minus infinity to infinity. And this what uh, uh, this trick is uh, very useful. Okay, so, once we have that and uh, now we are going to address the question that given. So, this is the question is important. So, let a n be a sequence such that summation over n mod of a n square is finite. So, the question what uh, we are asking is it necessarily true? true that there exists f which is Riemann integrable such that f hat of n is equal to a n. So, we are going to address this question in our next lecture and then we will proceed to find some pointwise convergence and if possible some more application uh, based on the Percival identity. Thank you.